Hi, I'm Jesse Camp Perspective, and we're back with another installment of Lessons in Aggression. And today, I wanted to talk about the difference between you know fear, nervousness, and anxiety uh, based behaviors and aggression. They all kind of come from an insecure place, and uh, they look very similar, but there's a very distinct response that each behavior has to a stressor that allows me to determine, you know, um, uh, what's fueling the, the aggression or the behavior uh, that we're seeing. Fear-based aggression um, can look uh, scary because the dog's putting up a front. They really don't want to go into conflict. Uh, they will, um, but typically if you push them into conflict, they'll do things like, you know, expressing their anal glands or shriek really loudly. Once you, once, once they've, uh, are put in a situation that they, they like completely did not want to happen. Uh, like for instance, when I have, uh, fear aggression towards humans, uh, the biggest thing that they're scared of is physical contact. So when I have my suit on and I make contact with them, they'll like scream and shriek. Uh, they tend to piano bite which means bite frantically. But the, the, the biggest thing that fear-based aggression tends to do is move away from the threat, okay? While keeping forward body language. Uh, so they either go into kind of a flight or they'll, they'll bluff as if, um, you know, they're gonna attack. But if you move into them, they'll move away. And then when you move away, they'll move in, okay? That's like the biggest thing that I'll see, the most noticeable thing that I'll see with fear-based aggression is they tend to be more flighty. Uh, and when you put pressure on them, if possible, they will completely, they'll keep back the entire time unless they're cornered. Like let's say if they don't have a leash that I can step on to trap them, as they go closer, because they have the capacity to, they'll like zoom out and run off and then flip around and, and keep barking. Uh, and they'll stay in that kind of adrenalized state and they don't really uh, let things go unless you completely remove them. And even if you remove them like in a different room, they tend to keep barking uh, until the threat has has left. So fear tends to want to move away from um, from whatever the stressor is, whatever the threat is, and they tend to try to kind of just keep in that 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 fight or that bluff. Nervous based aggression or nervous dogs, uh, they settle. Let's say you know I knock on a door and I enter the home, they'll start off with a lot of barking, but if I sit down and just like ignore them, they'll calm down, and then the moment like I raise the tone of my voice or I lift up my hands or stand up, all of a sudden they jump up and start, they start barking again. Let's say we have a setting where the, the, the owner has like friends over and they're watching a football game and their dogs like was barking at first and they settle down and they like are laying down and they're just kind of sitting there watching everybody and the moment someone gets up and goes to move, the dog will either bark or they'll charge and they'll nip at them at their leg or their hand or their, their heel and then run away. So it's action response. So with the fear-based aggression, they, they tend to keep in it. They tend to keep barking and, and, and just being stoic unless you move in and then they'll move away. Uh, and they'll just keep barking. They, they tend to not settle. Nervous energy will settle and it usually takes them a while to settle uh, if they go unaddressed and they will trigger when something suddenly changes in the environment, okay? So they'll either start barking or they'll go for that bite at that moment. Uh, whereas fear-based aggression will bite when you actively do something, uh, like make contact with them when you when you press them beyond beyond threshold, because they really don't want uh, conflict. And then anxious-based or anxiety-based behavior or aggression uh, tends to move a lot. It tends to not settle. Okay, and if they if the, if the dog will be pacing and pacing and pacing and panting, you use a lot of salivating, or they'll be standing and it's just kind of like heavy breathing. And if they lay down, they'll lay down for like two seconds and they'll get up and they'll start pacing again. And then, you know, if something moves, they'll, they'll trigger. Um, they're kind of a mixture of both like fear and nervous responses. You know, if you, if you press them beyond threshold or if you move too quickly, that tends to like just trigger the aggressive response. But usually they move around a lot. They're constantly pacing. They're unable to settle. The, the brain is nonstop moving. When I'm reading a dog, it's, it's literally, literally like I see like a scale of things, you know, we have I'll have the fear, the nervousness, the anxiety, the aggression. The fear could be a two, the anxiety a zero, the nervousness a six, and like the aggression of three. You know, like there's all these ranks for the for the behaviors, which makes up that specific dog's personality type or you know, uh, just how they handle stress. 
you know, your dog could be a mixture of each one of these things. Uh, your dog could be solely based in one of these behaviors. It can be to different degrees of what each behavior is. And they may be fearful when people come over and anxious when there's a storm and nervous when there's like a lot of fast moving traffic, you know, uh, like walking them down the street. Like they, it could be a specific response that's to a context or it can just be the dog is always nervous, or I'm sorry, always uh, anxious is actually good, always anxious whether when people come over, when they're outside going on a walk, when there's a lot going on, or when they hear loud noises, it's anxiety, 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 you know, as a response to stressors. Whereas others, it can be certain certain type types of, of responses to certain contexts. And of course, just the varying degrees and levels of them. Um, and just because your dog is fearful, nervous, or anxious, doesn't mean you're gonna see aggression, it just means that's how that dog um, responds to stress. When I, when I work with dogs like with obedience, and let's say I have a completely stable dog, which seemingly isn't fearful, nervous, or anxious, when we put them under stress, either through you know prong pressure or e-collar pressure, those two tools tend to bring out those responses in the dogs, and it's not because the tool itself is making the dog that way, it's because that's actually the dog's stress response. It had just never been put under enough stress to show that response. So people tend to think like, oh, like did you just make the dog more anxious? And I go, no, I didn't. The, the dog already had an anxiety type response to stressors. You just had not ever put your dog under a level of stress that caused that to come out. And in my opinion, it's good because now we know the dog's stress response and actually that's how we build the dog's confidence and teach them how to handle nervousness, fear, and anxiety in a healthier fashion because we put them under controlled context of stress, teach them how to deal with it. And then once they figure out how to work through these things, it helps them handle stress, you know, uh, their stress responses in other kind of contexts. So uh, if you're ever trying to figure out whether or not a dog is fearful, nervous, or anxious, that's how those are, in my experience, the most um, uh, straightforward and consistent uh, responses that those dogs do. Fear wants to run away. Uh, nervousness triggers when there's a sudden change in the environment and anxiety doesn't want to sell. Okay. So I'm Jesse with Camp Perspective. Thank you for watching today's lessons in aggression. Until next time, take care.